Thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're going to cover some of the most common mistakes that I see new bug bounty hunters or penetration testers make. And even I still make some of these mistakes. And I'll give you a few examples a little bit later on. Now let's go ahead and jump into it. And the first mistake or issue that I see new bug bounty hunters or penetration testers run into, they ask what they need to learn and then they hear this gigantic list of things they need to learn and they start to panic. So mistake number one is panic. When they tell you not to panic, that's when you run! You see all of the things you need to know and you think this is overwhelming and it is overwhelming and you just start to panic. But if you break it down into small sections, it becomes a lot more manageable. So tackle one thing at a time, find something that you're interested in and just focus on that for a certain amount of time and then move on. Break things up into manageable small tasks and you will be okay. And a sub point to this is there are a lot of tools that you're going to need to know how to use in the world of ethical hacking and you can just go ahead and make a list of tools and just say one tool every three days you're going to play around with it and learn it and after a while you'll have learned how to use all of the tools and understand what is going on and don't worry you're going to forget the flags but that's what the help pages are for and number two i often get asked what tools people need to buy what kind of computers they need to be running what is the best thing to host virtual machines and all different kinds of questions regarding what you should buy the really cool thing about ethical hacking is it's pretty much free all you need to have is a laptop and you really don't need to purchase anything else because all you need is virtual machines and you can download those for free and a sub point to this is I often get asked where's the best place to practice and people automatically want to go to hack the box and try hack me and those really are great places to practice but there are also free places to practice you can practice for free on Fort Swigger and they have a lot of challenges and a lot of labs and a lot of and a lot of vulnerabilities that are gonna fall into the OWASP top 10. And you're gonna have a lot of time spent right there to practice and to be learning. And so Port Swigger is a great place to learn if you're a beginner who has some kind of basic foundation. If you have no basic foundation, then you can go to Over the Wire and you can learn Linux there. And then you can do some basic web vulnerability testing on the Nautis portion of the website. And those places are both free. And so you really, you don't have to spend any money to see if this is something that you're interested in pursuing. And number three is too little recon. And this is something that I can even fall into. I can get into a hurry and I can just start going through and looking at different pages and directories and seeing what I'm able to find. But the other day, an example of this is I came across a login page and I tried to do some basic SQL injection. Then I pulled over the request and I put it into a SQL map and nothing came back. And then after a while, I wasn't able to find any bugs. And so I had to go back over and start the recon over just to find out that it was running LDAP and you can bypass the authentication with a simple little payload. But it would have saved me some time if I would just sort of done the recon the right way the first time and actually read the outputs of the tools and the scans and then look through the source code and just look at what's there so that way I would have caught this the first time and it would have saved me a bunch of time. And so for new people and even experienced bug hunters and penetration testers, doing good recon is something you are gonna have to try and maintain all the way through your career. And number four, this one is specifically for bug bounty hunters or somebody who's just new to the CTF world. And that is you try to target really hard programs. Don't do that. You see that there's a really large scope and then you go ahead and dive in when you're not quite ready to be doing something like that. You're not ready to target the really large, hard programs. And maybe you should still be learning and just be doing CTFs alone. And then I see a lot of people struggle saying they're not able to actually find any flags on the capture the flags. And usually this is because they are trying to do these CTFs that are beyond their skill level and trying to avoid walkthroughs. I got it. I got it. It's all very clear to me now, Mr. Krabs. It is? Yes. I finally realized that I can't do it. And sometimes you need to look at the walkthrough because you may not know or ever come across this specific exploit before and you're not really sure what you're supposed to do. So finding easy CTFs and targeting easy bug bounty targets is really going to help you in developing your skills. And number five is one that people tend to fall in and out of and that is you get tired of learning or you just stop learning altogether for a period of time, maybe two weeks or a month and you have to go back and re-dive into your schedule of trying to learn and continue moving forward and progressing. Because the field is so large, you're always going to 
going to have to be continuing to learn and to study and to watch YouTube videos and to read books, read blog posts, look at new exploits that have recently come out. There's so much to stay on top of. It can be overwhelming, but don't worry about being overwhelmed. Just continue to learn a little bit every single day. That is what I try to do and that is what I encourage other people to try and do. You cannot stop learning or you will get left behind. And number six is one that I see a lot of new or entry level penetration testers or bug bounty hunters fall into and that is you rely on other people's scripts or tools and you're not ever trying to advance your skills and being able to program. So if you want to move beyond what is called the script kitty and just using other people's scripts is you need to be studying some kind of programming language and I would recommend Python or JavaScript depending on what you're interested in because this is really going to help you understand how applications work and be improving your skills. So developing your skills as a programmer is going to be something that's really important if you ever want to move into the realm of developing exploits or being able to chain together different exploits, this will be really helpful for you to not rely on other people's scripts and their tools that they have written. And mistake number seven is not taking good notes or developing some kind of cheat sheet. You really are going to want to develop some kind of cheat sheet. I personally use OneNote and I have a whole bunch of subsets of different vulnerabilities. So a really good cheat sheet is going to help you. You can actually go out to Google and if you just Google like an OSCP cheat sheet, some of these are going to be really helpful for you when you're new and you're trying to do just some basic enumeration. And if you're interested in bug bounty hunting, you can just Google bug bounty hunting cheat sheet or bug bounty hunting enumeration. And they're going to have checklists for you to follow because when you're new, you're going to really struggle to remember what you're doing and even more advanced penetration testers and bug bounty hunters will still use cheat sheets because you can and will forget different things and this can cause you to miss out on some vulnerability. And so with that, we'll go ahead and end this video. Thanks for watching.